G'day, fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south side of the map in the color blue, playing as the Chinese. We've got Averly. And in the north side of the map, in the color purple, playing as the Delhi Sultanate, it's Don Arty. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this, of course, is Lipany. And there's a map that is pretty good for the Delhi Sultanate, for the Abbasid Dynasty, and it is definitely Lipany. For anybody who doesn't know, when you drop down a mill over on the berries, it's going to be increasing the amount of food that are inside each of these berry bushes and also going to be having a nice little, uh, I think you've got, I don't think it's a faster gather rate. I think you can just carry more berries. So instead of carrying 10 food, you carry 13, which is nice considering on Lipany, there's lots of berries. You spawn with your starting berries and then there's four extra patches per person compared to just the normal two, which you see on Dry Arabia. On top of that, three sacred sites means that the possibility for a sacred victory is always on the cards as well as lots of opportunities to pick up passive gold early on. But this is not a fun matchup for the Delhi Sultanate. We've got a great map, but they don't have a great matchup here. Averly on the Chinese is going to be in prime position. Actually, have we got to have... Are we going to have an idle TC? We're going to have an... Uh, Averly, no, not like this. Averly coming out early on with the idle town center. One second, two seconds, three seconds, four... Oh, oh my lord. All right, that's it. The game has already been called. <laughs> oh, gosh. I love I love to give anybody crap. It's. <laughs> I saw a meme on Reddit. It was like... I, I can't remember, but it was just like somebody was was watching and, you know, the the TC goes idle for one second. It's like, yeah, look. Oh, no, it was the, the wood chopper meme. I don't know if you guys saw that one. That was a classic meme. Uh, I, it, it was like, it, it felt so... What's the word? You know how in, memes have evolved over the years, right? Like we've gone through different phases, different ages of memes, and now they're kind of in this uh, deep fried stage. Or, uh, it, to be honest, deep fried's probably been in past. I think we're kind of through deep fried into surreal. I'm not sure, but anyway, it was it was very surreal. It was just such a stupid little meme, um, which is always a good thing. When a meme's stupid, it's great. Uh, but uh, he, he was <laughs> talking about like, you know, watching a pro player and they're not refreshing their lumber camps immediately. It's like, ah, what a noob. It's the exact same thing. It's like, we're watching, you know, Don Hardy, he, he's top 20, Averly top 30. We're watching the best players in the world. It's like, ah, <laughs> you had an idle TC for two seconds here. This guy's terrible. I could take him out easily. It's like, I'm, I'm gold one, sir. <laughs> anyway, let's talk a little bit about this matchup. What makes this such a difficult matchup? Now, the reason why this matchup is hard is because the Chinese have got a lot of tools to deal with the Delhi Sultan. Uh, so as an example, Barbican, you can just come place that Barbican down on this sacred site. And now all of a sudden, it's not an, a free sacred site for you to take. On top of that, it's the central sacred site. So it's a really nice position to just kind of keep your army here. And then if your enemy looks to try and take a sacred site over on the west side, you can push out there or on the east side, you can do the same thing out there. So the Barbican gives you a lot of leverage. Now, of course, we don't always see players go for the Barbican on the sacred site. But I think in a situation like this, where you've got the double deer pack towards the front, Barbican here just makes so much sense. It, it, it's such a, a great Barbican. Uh, so I would expect to see Averly go for something like that. The alternative is that he just goes for something in his base. Uh, and Because and, this, this is quite open towards this gold vein, and he will want to collect gold. Uh, because in this matchup, you're going to be looking to go heavily, play heavily with the Zhukunu. Uh, the Zhukunu, obviously, incredibly strong uh, in the Feudal Age. But one of the key factors for it is that it's good against unarmored units. In the Delhi Sultanate, no armored units in the Feudal Age. If you think about civs that have got armored units, like, okay, as an example, Rus, French, they both get the Knight. Malians, they get the Sofa. So th those three civilizations, the Chukunu, it does not not the best against them. And then we think about Men at Arms, okay? So then there's the, uh, the English and the Holy Roman Empire, both with Men at Arms. Uh, so that's two more civs that are off the table. On top of that, you can throw in the Ottomans because they've got the Sipahi with a little bit of extra armor from the... Uh, the meta, so they're off the table. So there's not that many sieves that really stack up that well. Well, I should say there's not many sieves that the, the Chukunu stack up that well against. And we do see the Barbicans coming out, but instead of placing it on that sacred site, he's just going to be placing it on the hunt. And I can't help but feel... I, I mean, this it's a bit of a missed opportunity, but at the same time, I understand where he's coming from, right? Because you can still use the Barbican to somewhat defend an attack onto that sacred site. So that's one of the key things. The only problem is it's not going to deny the sacred sites. Previously, uh, you know, like in, in Don's position here, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes into, say, three scholars and looks to hit all three sacred sites at that five minute or at that uh, seven minute mark, seven minute 30 mark. And now it's like, well, now you can you can deny one sacred site with the scout and the other two your enemy's going to get. So it, it's uh, it's one of those things where it's it's a bit tough. But anyway, 
We move on. We move forward. We're right on board with the Don as he's actually gone with the Dome of the Faith. Something that we don't typically see a lot. The Dome of the Faith. Uh, and we can see that he is rallying those scholars into the mosque. And uh, already he's got Sanctity underway. Two minutes and, no and eight seconds. So going to be a very quick Sacred Sight cap here for him. Throwing down the archery range. Just a single blacksmith coming out early on. Now keep in mind he's very cognizant of the fact he's going to be playing up against uh, Jukunu. So I'm curious how he looks to play this because often we do see people in this matchup going to Tower of Victory. Tower of Victory makes a lot of sense against the, the Chinese because Chinese are probably going to be playing a, a bit of a heavier feudal age. So you want something that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Jukunu. Um, and that that's one of the ways that you can do it. Uh, but uh, we'll check in now over on the other side of the map. We'll watch Averly as the Barbican has come up about five minutes 40. And he's actually going to be going into a second town tonight. Now, I, I, I don't I don't want to call this out before, but I always found in my matchups against the Delhi, second town center was the biggest mistake you could make because you actually need quite a bit of tempo uh, in the early game to deny sacred sites. And that's the big thing you want, right? Like when you think of the Delhi game plan, what are they looking at? Number one, I'm going to take sacred sites. Number two, I'm going to go castle age. Number three, I'm going to pick up relics. And number four, I'm going to try for a sacred victory. And those things are all, all kind of lead in to each other. So if you deny them from sacred sites, then they can't really go castle age because they can't get the gold to go castle. They've got to fight you a little bit longer in the feudal age. And because they've done that, then you can get up to the castle age. You can deny them relics. And now there's no threat of them ever getting that sacred victory because you've denied them so much of that passive gold that you're able to keep up with them. So it all really leads into it. And by going into the second TC, to me, it feels like you're allowing them to begin their game plan a little bit early. And we do see now that second town center is going to come down for Averly here, about 6 minutes 50. Not a bad timing, about 30 seconds behind where the Anomi build would be, 30 to 40 seconds behind where the Anomi build would be. But obviously, he's sacrificed a little bit of efficiency here with the Barbican, the forward Barbican. Now, one of the things that Averly's got going for him here is this forward Barbican. I absolutely do love this. The fact that it's the double deer hunt, this is more than 4,500 resources out here of food and on top of that you've also got the imperial official that you bring out so i would be very tempted to say to him you know like what what you should be doing bring up bring out plenty of villagers out here get that supervisor out here wonderful stuff uh but we do start to see don starting to take sacred sites there's the first one expect to see all three sacred sites and don arty just playing a perfect deli opening here i'm loving this stuff because as i said th this is the way that you want to play deli the most optimal way with, with an opening like this, getting all three of those sacred sites. And basically, you're putting the burden on the enemy. You're saying, hey, I'm taking all three sacred sites. It's your job to deny those from me. And we can see right now the scout manages to deny the sacred site for maybe five, six seconds before the horseman comes, forces him back. Now, had the Barbican been here on the central sacred site, that's 150 gold a minute less now that Averly, or that uh, Don is going to be getting. Now, of course, he's still going to be capping this one sacred site over here, but it buys you a little bit of time in that regard. Look, at the end of the day, you're probably going to lose the Barbican to a battering ram or two, or, you know, maybe Don just brings three scholars out into the middle and just heals through the Barbican, which is also something uh, that, that you can do to combat it. Uh, but already, I mean, we're eight minutes into this game and the sacred victory is already approaching. And th the real problem that you've got is this is actually a genuine sacred victory attempt right here that's what's scary because don is now walling up the central sacred site he can react in time before that sacred uh site is under pressure he's walling up the sacred site on the east and we see he's yet to wall up over on the west side but he's got a mobile force right like we're, we're talking about a force that is largely horsemen archers and yeah, they're not as not, not that mobile but he can at least try and delay any sacred uh, attempt and, and uh, my suspicion is we're going to see him go straight to the castle age and that's exactly what we see you can see right there 24 vils on food that gold is going to start trickling in very quickly we'll watch as it starts to come through but he's going to be castle age probably within the next 90 seconds uh probably even less than that probably closer to what 60 seconds or something like that because he, he he will probably just pull pull a lot of villagers and, and look to drop it down now i think the question for don is what landmark does he go for i suspect it's probably going to be the uh the compound of the defender Compound of the Defender, a really, really nice landmark, especially when you're going for Sacred Victories, you know, just delete the back wall here, throw down a keep, throw down a second keep, all that good stuff. Uh, so I, I would expect that we do see that from him, but you can see now Averly is going to be going into the feudal style. This is a pretty standard feudal style, right? Like the, the Jukunu Spear. The problem is your enemy, like look at the forces out here, 21 versus 10. And on top of that, Don is going, he's going castle right now. Look at this. It, it, he's got enough resources. Compound of the Defender gets thrown down. So... The age up will be coming through shortly and 18 villagers on it. So he is indeed in a rush. I think we said 60 seconds. It was probably probably about, what, 35 seconds ago. So it might be a little bit over that. But Don obviously doing the right thing, looking to get up as quickly as he can. Horseman. 
down towards the base of Avery. He's got to be careful here, fighting up against a lot of spears, but nice little micro manages to take out one of them. And as, as long as he just keeps... The, the idea here is that uh, Don just wants to keep Avery on his side of the map until he can get to Knights, or until he can get to Lancers, but it looks like he might actually move over onto this Western Sacred site. Uh, Don doesn't actually have units in position to deal with this. He has, he, and this is a little bit of a mistake because he could have very easily thrown down a gate and then moved everybody over. We can see he's got these, but I also would say that I don't think it's imperative that the sacred timer comes through now. I mean, we've, we've taken two minutes off it, sure, but this is going to be very easy for Don to recapture and, and recommit. And we start to hear those uh, relics being picked up. So this is this is the, the next thing that we talk about. So that's four relics already picked up right now for Don. So incredibly well played here by him. What, the last relic is in, or at the very back of the base here for the Chinese player. The very last relic, and that's going to be walled in shortly. So unlikely that Don captures it, but impressive stuff. And we do see that sacred site will get neutralized over on the west side. So that's going to buy Averly a bit of time. Now, that, that is the one thing here. If Averly can buy himself time, uh, ideally between the 25 to 30 minute mark, he can actually... Uh, win in this game because the two town centers at the end of the day they have done a really good job in, in getting him ahead with regard to the economy but don's keeping up and that's important to remember because he might be down 21 villages but he's got those two sacred sites which are just working overtime when it comes to the amount of of gold they're bringing in and he's got the relics so four relics in the bag as well so there's a lot of factors but remember on top of that he's also going to have access to village fortresses which is coming through now and that kind of gives him a bit of insulation in the late game so yeah sure he's on one tc at the moment uh, and he's up against 2.66 town centers over on the other side of the map but it's not really that bad because in the meantime while he's not creating villages he does have that passive gold coming through and once it does you know, once the passive gold is, is not enough to meet that difference in villages, well, he'll, he'll have village fortresses ready. So very interesting, uh, very interesting um, play here from Don to be to be going into this. And I think, I, I suspect we're probably going to see Delhi players look to play a little bit more towards the late game, especially with village fortresses. And my suspicion is that Dome of the Faith will actually become quite meta. Um, just simply because as, as Delhi players realize, hey, I can get away with a late game play here. Like, you, you throw down a madrasa, put 20 scholars in it, and you've got every single Imperial upgrade. I'm, I'm literally, like, every, every single upgrade for free. That's a, that's a big thing. And on top of that, you've got the relics. Like, very commonly, you do see the the, uh, the Delhi ending up with four out of the five relics, you know, or, or in almost every single game. Uh, they're going to have four out of five. Um, so, th th there's a lot of things that, to me, indicate, like, you know what? Delhi late game isn't actually as terrible as we think it might be. But the age up now coming through for Averly. He's up 27 villages, and we do see the astronomical clock tower has been thrown down. Looks like he's going to be moving into a couple of nested beasts, which is definitely the right choice here, but we can see that there's quite a few lancers out, so needs to bring those spearman numbers up, and honestly, he's got Chukunu here, and I, I would have I been throwing away these Chukunu a lot earlier than, than what he has done with them. He's kind of, like, left them alive. I, I really dislike having Chukunu in, in, the, uh, in the Castle Age. I just feel they're, they're, so, they're so useless, um, even though I love them. In the castle age, it's a different story. But Don Hardy now going to start to push down. First villager of the game goes down. Nesta B is going to be popped out here. Nice little, nice little defensive position he's got. And we start to see that third sacred site now going to be captured up for Don over on that west side of the map. Now underneath the Barbican, villagers going to be running for their lives as spears looking to try and meet them. We can see them all grouped together with the uh, Nesta B. So it's going to be a little bit later. And it looks like only the two villagers go down. Nesta B is getting off some good shots. And expect to see Don Hardy look to drop down a siege workshop uh, just to, to get out a couple of preemptive sprinkles. Let's take a look in the base and see if we've got anything going down just yet. Doesn't look like it. All three sacred sites are now taken, and the sacred timer has begun once again. So expect to see some keeps getting thrown down shortly. Has, has Don... Yeah, Don's, Don's on 600 stone a minute right here, so he is collecting like a madman, uh, and keeps will be dropped down very, very soon. Now, scholar numbers. He's up to 12 scholars. And this is the part of me where I'm starting to think, you know what, like, Delhi Imperial Age is actually legit if you can get there. Look at those veteran spears just running in, meeting the lancers head on. So nice little trade there. But keep in mind, the lancers have always got access to those heals that are going to be coming through. Donati picking up a whole bunch of upgrades as well. Um, and yeah, we start to see everything coming through. Spears looking to try and deny this sacred site over on the east side, but the wall's going to prevent that. So Don Artie just playing a 
a pretty clinical game here from the Delhi Sultan. I think the, o the only thing I would have changed about Don Artie's play is just walling in this sacred site. And ha had this had this sacred site been walled in, he probably would have had enough time to get over here. I don't, I don't know whether he would have been able to hold the sacred site. I suspect probably not. Actually, you know what? He probably would have, right? Like you throw all your units at it, the, the archers together with the horsemen. And by that time, the lancers will have come out. And you, you've got one or two lancers over here. That should be enough to hold the sacred site. And I mean, to be fair, the, the Chinese player is probably going to be throwing more units at it if they if they think, you know, I, I can stop this. Uh, but at the same time, um, yeah, I, I think that's probably the biggest mistake Don's made this game. But look at the Lancer numbers. Up to 20 Lancers now. Don Artie going absolutely crazy. Just going to be cleaning up some spears here. Palisade wall. Going to be burned down. Now, remember, archers can't actually repair Palisade gates, but they can just rebuild them. Um, so I, I would just be deleting that. Throw down a new wall. Throw down. Shift Q a gate in, and you're fine. There's the sprinkled out now for Don. How many stables is Don Artie on? Three stables? Is it only three stables? But I guess he's got the um, the scholars in them as well, doesn't he? Or at least he's got the scholars in one. Uh, but we start to see now Village Fortresses is in. One of the best technologies in the game. Honestly, I, I think this technology is just so great because it really allows versatility in the way that you are playing as the Delhi Sultan. We'll hear those Nesta Bees now firing off a keep being thrown down on the front line. Abelie going to be looking to pull in a bit more stone here. We'll be looking for an additional keep to challenge this. So the idea is he should be looking to clear out the wall and then throw a keep down somewhere around here. But we do see that sacred site once again under pressure. The question is going to be whether Don wants to try and fight this. I, if I'm Don, I'm looking to delete this wall. There's no real point at the moment to keep this wall up. So all it's going to do is restrict your own units. Archer's starting to move forward. He's got the veteran here upgrade through. Plus two ranged armor is in. Plus one ranged attack only for the moment. But we do see more upgrades coming through for the Don. Seven minutes and 30 seconds to go. Wall up towards the north did get denied. And a keep going to be thrown down. Just a handful of villagers building this keep. So that's going to be keep number three for Don. One keep, two keeps, three keeps. Are there any four? Four keeps. Uh, do we have any more back here? No, just it looks like the four keeps for the moment. So Don already playing a very solid defensive game. And there's that next keep being leapfrogged. Uh, so we do see this this kind of, kind of like piggyback keeping or... I don't, I don't even know really how to describe it. Uh, but essentially, players look to move these keeps up slowly and steadily. And you can see with the nest of bees underneath the keeps, it's going to be really hard to deal with as long as boiling oil comes through. Because then you've got two rounds of boiling oil. And it's like, it, it, you, you would be incredibly surprised how quickly boiling oil can melt through units. Once, you've, once you're talking about two or even three keeps, it's just, it's, it's nigh impossible. Uh, but we do see now boiling oil is going to come through. Now, I, I'm pretty sure you can actually supervise a keep. Uh, with an Imperial official. Whole bunch of idle villagers here. He's going to stand on the sacred site once again. Archer's going to begin to move forward. Keep in mind the Springleds are here. We're going to enter into the cinematic mode as it is time, ladies and gentlemen, for us to get down to business. Ain't more, ain't no time to play around. Clock Tower Springleds, though, or Clock Tower Nest of Bees, and you can see big mistake right here. Grouping everything together. Springleds should be able to get a shot off here. He's going to try and pull them forward. Averly got to be... A Averly uh, might be able to take out the, the Springleds if he fires correctly down. If he identifies, yeah, you can see how much damage that keep does. Yeah, he's going to take out a Springlord. So Don Artie, a little bit aggressive right there. Maybe not controlling the units perfectly. So second mistake for Don Artie. Jeez, oh, can't believe this guy's made a second mistake. And holy moly, huge attack coming in from that west side now. Big flank looking to come through. Palace Guard's going to be out here. Spears get pulled away. Trebuchet going to be joining the party here as Averly looks to try and take out the central sacred site. And he's already got a really solid push starting to come together here. The fact he's got these keeps so close to the sacred site is just a, a real wonder. Uh, I'd, I'd love, the, the big thing I'd love to see right now is just him take down this wall, allow a little bit more flexibility in the way that he, he positions his units. But now we do see those... Lance is beginning to pull back. Second keep going to be thrown down on this central sacred site. I say second keep on the sacred site. It's not really. It's kind of just like a positional keep at this point. But there are more keeps that are probably going to be thrown down all over this map. And we can see Don Artie is going to be climbing in village account. Now, only the, the difference between them down to 24. Don Artie is rapidly closing the gap on his enemy. And look at this. A huge raid going to be coming in. So not only is the closing the gap coming through from the uh is it coming through from the additional uh town centers in the form of village fortresses but it's also going to be through dead villages but fortunately the spears do come out nice little wall in here from Averly. going to be throwing down a beautiful wall all the way to that keep just to prevent any units from making it through onto the back line we can see he's got plenty of farms already coming up and honestly, this this I'm, I'm loving this matchup so far. Like this is this is such a great matchup, uh, su such a good game already. It feel it feels very much like watching. If you've ever seen Br Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, it, it's like watching, um, you know, t two people go up against each other uh, in BJJ. It, it's like it is just very uh, strategic and tactical. 
it's, it's almost like chess to me, it feels like. You, you're just always looking to work towards that next little bit of position and determine exactly where your enemy is going to go. But look at this. We've got an Imperial Age coming through right now. Spirit Way going to get thrown down. And this is where things get interesting because now once your Imperial Age comes through, you can actually move back into uh, Jukunu. But look at this. Don going to get caught out of position. He was trying to throw down a keep here, I suspect. And look at these nest of bees looming for villager kills here. Don going to be losing quite a few vills. We see the health of these villagers is getting dwindled. And, oh, Don making a huge mistake. Look at him moving up with the with the um, Springlords. Big mistake here from Don. Losing out two Springlords. Big mistake. You do not want to go near a keep, uh, a Chinese keep with Springlords. It's just way too strong. A lot of villagers here in the middle trying to keep this keep alive. If a keep goes down, it's going to lose a lot of the positional advantage that Don's got. But he does have the Mangonels, and there's not a lot of Springlords here from his enemy. The key thing to note, though, are that there are these nest of beasts. So what upgrades does Avely look to go into now? Because you've got to remember, right? Once you've hit Imperial Age, you need to actually do something with it. Am I going to ha unlock a new unit and then use that? Or am I going to go into an upgrade and utilize that? And we see at the moment, Palace Guards yet to receive their upgrades. Spearmen yet to receive their upgrades. Jukunu not yet to receive any upgrades. I haven't seen any Elite or Imperial... Um, any, any Imperial difference come through just yet. The one thing to note is that he has unlocked the new, the new ability of the Spirit Way. And that's about it. In that he can... Uh, get access to that extra attack speed if the Chukunu die. Uh, but unfortunately, it's melee units together with the range units, so not really going to work that well. Spearman now starting to move forward. Three minutes until Sacred Victory. Don Artie looking to try and defend this position. Springlord's moving up. Get a good shot there on the back line. And you can see the consequence of not removing that wall out. And Spears now moving forward. Nesta Beast. Nesta Beast get a massive shot off. All of the all of the Springles are going to go down to the Nesta Beast. The consequence of not deleting this wall is all of your Springles are grouped up. And Don Arty loses almost everything. I think there's a single Springle in there remaining. And now looking to hold the Sacred Site, sitting at about 10% at the moment. We might enter into the cinematic mode because I'll tell you what, we bloody well should have done it not too long ago. Trev's firing off. The keep is going to go down. And with that, Spearman going to be rallied onto the Sacred Site. Palace Guards here as well. No elite upgrades coming through. So all of these units are going to get completely denied here. Knight numbers, or rather Lancer numbers, going to be able to clean this up. And now all the Scholars on the Central Sacred Site should be more than enough to hold. And look at them all healing together. And Don Hardy really looking to push this issue. The Sacred Victory is coming through. The trebuchet still sits safely at the back of the base here for Averly. He needs to move into those elite units, though. That's going to be the real key difference here. And we can see Palace Guards now getting their upgrades. Going to be moving into Battle Heart. And definitely the right call here for him. You can see the resources just going all out of whack, right? He's stacking up 4,000 wood. It's a classic case of just take 20 vills, throw them on the gold vein, take another 20 vills, throw them all on farms, Build, build yourself another 10 barracks and you're you're absolutely Gucci. The problem is right now, the numbers here for Don Arty are, are absolutely insane. Look at the Scholars. Look at the Scholars. He's got 17 Scholars out here right now. Looks like the Keep was able to take out a Mangadel. He's going to fall back onto the Sacred Site. Don Arty really looking to commit to this. Not actually going to be going for Imperial Age himself. Keep in mind when it comes to population difference, hey, Averly slightly ahead. He was maxed out for a brief period. Village is going to get pulled onto this sacred site as well. A Averly, really in this position, needs to be going into roller shutter triggers. This is the key here. Needs to be throwing down a siege workshop, supervise it, roller shutter triggers, and one, two, maybe even three springlords. But the problem is, it, I, I'm starting to feel like it might have been too late. Had he done that as soon as he'd aged up, it would have been a different story. He could clear out all of this siege completely. There'd be no mangonels. And look at the mangonels. The Don's built up. He's up to five mangonels. Treb's going to be looking to try and snipe out those mangonels. Plenty of villagers here on the sacred site. Don Arty really putting pressure on now. Up to 27 population on but just with siege alone. Treb's still firing down at the units on the sacred site. Keep in mind, the scholar's going to be there to heal it up. And it looks like we've got a, a sacred attempt over on the west side. Villagers did manage to come onto it and hold the sacred site for a small amount of time. We can see the palace guards will get denied there. Keep in mind, boiling oil together with all of those keeps. Going to be looking strong. But now villagers are going to get pulled for Averly. Averly, not like this. Is, is he just trying to... He can't. The thing is, he, he's not even holding the sacred sites. Moving into the meat grinder. Look at this, the Mangonels. He's trying to kill the siege. And it's villager on villager action on the sacred site. Everybody now to the sacred site. And oh my lord, look at the villagers getting pulled. The problem is Don Arty is standing on the sacred site. So as long as there are Don units on the sacred site, the sacred timer continues to tick. 
It does not matter that Averly is even putting pressure on here. Averly needs to clear every single villager from the sacred site. He's doing a decent job with the Mangadels. One minute to go until sacred defeat for Averly and sacred victory comes through for the Don. He's done it before. Will he do it again? Villager numbers continuing to build on this sacred site. Don just pulling everybody in. Good game gets called. Averly says, I cannot do it. He is eliminated. Fellas, make sure you go check out Don Artie. I'm going to leave a link in the description of where you can go and watch him live. If Averly streamed, I'd leave a link to him as well, but he doesn't. So I'm just going to say, Averly, good stuff, mate. Keep it up. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.